And I think there's a lot of confusion about what the difference is between Web3 and Web2, well, Web2, but between the metaverse and, and people say the metaverse says, you know, is there only one metaverse or are there a number of metaverses? <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to yet another episode of New Firm. We're always excited to bring you inspiring and brilliant guests on our podcast. We're powered by Newcoin Foundation, focused on fostering the expansion of decentralized social applications, also known as Social 3.0, by forming an ecosystem and a community of visionaries, creators, and investors to spark conversations on the topics of crypto, the metaverse, NFT, and everything Web3. And in today's episode, we're super honored to have with us Leslie Holden, the co-founder at the Digital Fashion Group, which is a European-led collaboration between fashion academics and industry. Being a design director and entrepreneur with over 20 years of experience in the fashion industry for such companies as Dunhill, Stefano, Biblos, Burberry, and Liberty, he has extensive knowledge of the international luxury market and the relationship from education to business. Leslie is going to share his perspective on how the metaverse can reshape fashion and how brands can enter the Web3 space. Leslie, we're super happy to have you with us today. Thank you, Joyce. And thank you, Salimi. And it's lovely to be here. Looking forward to talking to you. Perfect. We're excited that you could join us. And we would love to hear a little bit about yourself as well as the digital fashion group. Yeah, well... Oh, my history goes back a long way. Um, I started, well, I did a fashion de fashion design degree in Edinburgh, and um, and then I did my master's degree in in London at the Royal College of Art, and then I started working, and I worked a lot in Italy, and some of the names that you just uh, said there, Joyce, and um, I worked as a designer for, for quite a long time. And um, yeah, as a design director, as a design manager. And then I gradually got into fashion education, um, kind of unawares, it just sort of happened. And suddenly I realized I'd been in fashion education for quite a long time. And, um, and I think that I find that so rewarding. I could see all my years of experience in in the fashion industry, um, leading towards being in fashion education. And I was, <clears throat> um, more recently, I was the head of fashion design for um, Amsterdam Fashion Institute for about 15 years. And in 2020, the beginning of 2020, I thought, oh God, 15 years is too long. I really need to move on. But, you know, I am of a certain age that it's not so easy to just to kind of move on. Um, so I wanted to think, well, what do I really want to do for the rest of my career? And I had a big burning question about the digitalization of fashion. Um, and I couldn't really answer that question in my job at that time. And I thought, well, what do I do with this? Do I go and study my PhD now? Um, do, I, uh, do I start writing about it? What, you know, because there was things happening, but there were really in the beginning in many ways. <clears throat> Although I had um, initiated one of the first courses in 3D virtual prototyping in Amphi in 2007. So I had a lot of experience in how the creative uses virtual prototyping. So just at the beginning of lockdown in 2020, my, my business partner, Sean Childs and I, um, had a conversation on video chat. He lives in Portugal. I live in Belgium. And we decided that we would start the Digital Fashion Group at the beginning of lockdown. Because as I said to him, COVID is going to change everything. The whole way that we work, the way we look at our work, the way we consider how, how we study, it's going to change. And orthodox fashion education will never be the same again. It can never be the same again. So the Digital Fashion Group, we collaborate with fashion academics and um, industry innovators. Um, we're working and collaborating with industry leaders to basically to equip 
fashion education, professionals and brands with the relevant skills and mindsets and strategies for tomorrow's, well, tomorrow's kind of borderless landscape of, of fashion. Now, bearing in mind, we started this before all the chatter about the metaverse. So you, you know, it seems so long ago now, but it was only two years ago. So we see ourselves <clears throat> really as an authority on fashion and fashion education, because really as one journalist referred to Sean and I as veterans of the fashion industry. And someone also told me recently I was an OG, which I didn't know what that meant. So I had to really kind of Google that one to find out what that was. But <clears throat> yes, I am definitely an OG. Um, so we've been around a long time. And, you know, I, I remember fashion in the beginning of the 80s. You know, so it's, you know, and I've seen it, how it's progressed, particularly fast fashion in that time. And we're now really applying our knowledge and our experience um, to digital engagement in the fashion industry. And we're really focusing on digital mindsets and digital strategy. First, digital mindset, because the strategy always comes later or the skills always come later. You need the right mindset. So we consider ourselves as you know, really leading the digital conversation in fashion education, where we look at changing the status quo in order to progress digitalization in the industry and digital transformation in society in general. We really believe that by embracing a digital mindset from point zero in education, digital strategies should be developed to address yeah, things like the negative and harmful impacts of the fashion industry on the environment and society as a whole. So we really see digitalization not as necessarily about the metaverse or about Web3, about these things. We're really looking at it across the whole value chain through the lens of the creative. And because everything starts with fashion, I mean, no, everything doesn't start with fashion. That's so silly. Everything starts with education. Um, we should really keep educating people in the right way. And, you know, today, fashion educators are really being educated in an old business model. And this is a bit weird when employability is such an important aspect in, well, in higher education today. It's like a key a key metric in a way. So you know, to kind of put that in context, in, on the whole, we are training in the UK alone, which obviously is where I come from, almost 5,000 fashion design graduates every year, only in the UK. Are these people really ready for the rapid digitalization of the industry? I don't think so. So change in fashion education is really needed to really kind of reimagine a new fashion designer, a new mindset, a new body of knowledge and skills, and bringing together all the really sophisticated technology that we've got coming on board and being developed today. That's super impressive with your experience. And, you know, you've been in the fashion industry for so long that you embrace that mindset of like digitalization. And that doesn't seem quite easy. And I'm wondering, like, how do you see brands join the, the this world and how can they um, make their digital brands? And how do you how do you perceive this whole change for brands? Yeah, <clears throat> I think there's huge, huge opportunities. But but it's still in the very beginning stages. And I think everyone's got very excited very quickly about the potential. So I think we need to keep it in perspective. But, you know, Web3, I think maybe to think about it from a Web3 perspective, because that's much more about the, the tools. And, and that's, in a way, leading on from what I've just been talking about, how important it is to teach the tools. Um, you know, so Web3 is, is really essentially a kind of third version of the internet. You know, and I think there's a lot of confusion about what the difference is between Web3 and Web2, well, Web but between the metaverse and 
and people say the metaverse says, you know, is there only one metaverse or are there a number of metaverses, you know, so it's, again, we're in the early stages, so the definitions aren't so clear, and who's defining it anyway? So Web3 is essentially the third version of the internet. Web2 really saw the birth of um, such giants as Google and Amazon and you know, social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all these kind of huge, large companies. And, and really, it's about large tech companies owning these platforms. And we use these platforms and we finance these companies to get even bigger and more controlling. And basically, Web3 enables individuals to own their own data. That's the most exciting thing about it. And, and collaborate or trade or, or work together and, and not going through this kind of large governing body or, or a kind of web two social media platform. But so users and suppliers can work openly and transparently together for themselves. Now these <clears throat> new tools can give various various and different kind of new brands and new businesses possibilities. And fashion brands could really take advantage of not only financially, but, but also from a sustainable perspective. And the future of Web3 is fundamentally about diversity and inclusion. That's really at the base of everything that it's about. And in the digital fashion group, our focus is about creatives working in this space. And Web3 is built on a blockchain and it decentralizes activities. The online presence and, and it kind of removes the dependency for these large tech companies. So it's perfect for young SMEs, young designers, growing brands, um, you know, to give them the opportunity to build new collections in new ways, using creativity and NFTs as well. You know, you really kind of, you know, it's it's a unique way of approaching a new and a unique way. You know, NFTs, you know, are, you know, just to be clear, <laughs> I don't know what your audience actually understand about these things, but, you know, NFTs, are, you know, they're, they're digital assets and um, they prove ownership. And NFT garments can potentially like, reshape the way that we that we understand understand things like luxury, you know, luxury, scarcity, um, and in a way, how we understand value as well. So, you know, one of the major uh, premises of NFTs is that the more you see an image, uh, the more cultural value it accrues, which is really quite different than how we see luxury at the moment. And and the more expensive it will then be because more people are seeing it. Um, it's also a, a kind of a, a space where creating a copy is good. It's, it's something that actually reaffirms the, the value of, of, of the asset. And it kind of goes against the, the fundamental idea that Luxury only exists for for a for a very few people. So these opportunities are are enormous, but we we haven't quite defined what these opportunities are yet. I mean, it's it's still a kind of borderless landscape. It's still a kind of wild west out there, and we're building it and we're we're making it happen, which is which is super interesting. So for for me as this OG, this old timer. <laughs> I I'm, I love the the opportunities. I love the, what it can bring in the digital fashion group. I'm just stop me when you want me to shut up. Okay, I'm just I'll just keep on going. Um, I wanted to ask you quickly. Yeah. So you know, I mean, honestly, you talking about the digital fashion group. I think I saw that one guest that we had on New Forum actually, uh, I, I think, took a class or something. And I remember like writing it down, like, ah, oh, this is what I've been looking for, you know, because I, I have a traditional background in fashion and I keep telling myself, I want to learn how to use these softwares. I want to learn more about digital fashion. And 
I'm like, Joy, we need to have a workshop together so you can help me. You know, we keep having such conversations. So I put that down, but I actually never got around like, you know, researching and looking into it. I just checked the LinkedIn. So me listening to you, I feel so excited. I'm like, huh, this could be it for me. And so I'm curious to know how can I, like, how do I enroll? Like how do creators or, you know, designers like get into it? Like if they want to take a course. Well, it's dead easy, really easy. When we first, when we first set up the course, um, so we've got two courses now. We've got Digital Fashion 101, which is a foundation course, and it's basically about what's happening in digitalization in fashion. Uh, who's doing what? Why are they doing it? How are they doing it? What does it mean? And um, it's six units. Uh, the beginning of each unit, there's a little lecture from, from Sean and I, my partner, kind of setting the context for the unit. And then there are um, interviews with key players in the in the sphere. So, like the fabricant are there, Kerry and Amber are there, Platform E are there, um, um, Unspun, Kala, uh, Digit Digitals. It goes on and on and on. So we've got lots of fantastic people talking, and. Uh, then there's reflection points and there's quizzes and uh, each unit should take a student about yeah, an hour and a half, two hours maximum to get through six units. Um, so that's Digital Fashion 101 and the new course, which we just launched a couple of weeks ago, um, 3Design, which is, is the foundations or the fundamentals of learning how to use Clo. So learning how to use a software, but it's done in a way which is really um, specially designed for the creative. One of the problems with learning online, um, particularly if you go, go free and go on YouTube, is that it, they do it so fast because they've got a short time and they give you lots of information, but they do it really, really quickly or, or the information is kind of shallow. Um, and it's aimed at everybody. And what we do is our um, lecturers do it in real time. So they're talking and they're doing it on the screen. And it gives you enough time to actually do it along with them and learn it. So it's, it's an amazing course. But what you just need to do is you need to go to our website and uh, it'll show you how to enroll. And it's really straightforward. We offer uh, scholarships as well, fully paid scholarships um, and uh, sponsored scholarships from industry. So this, at the moment, we have a scholar going through 3Design who um, his scholarship is being supported by Modern Mirror, um, which is a company in New York. Um, our last scholarship was supported by BNV in Hong Kong. And uh, we have lots and lots and lots of partners. So we call on them to pay for some scholarships as well. But that's brilliant. I mean, no, I it's, think it's an incredible course. It's brilliant. And I will totally, I mean, look into it because, you know, if you actually enroll, then you want to be accountable and you want to be responsible and you want to get through it. But if I keep telling myself, I'm just going to find some YouTube video or something, I, I keep. I never get around it because I keep getting busy. So yep. this is great. Yep. And, you know, you spoke a bit, a bit about the metaverse and you yep. said, we, we don't really know. Everybody brings their own perspective and definition to it. And so I'm not sure if you have your definition of what the metaverse is. And do you think the metaverse is here or do we have to wait a bit longer? And how can this metaverse reshape the fashion industry? That's a really good question. Um, you know, sometimes I think I know what the metaverse is and then, then I'm not so sure. It's kind of like trying to grab a butterfly. It's changing all the time and, and it's developing, but it's how you define it as well. I mean, I see, I like to think of in, more in Web3 in a way, in the technology. And I see the metaverse is really like a platform for marketing at the moment that's very much what it is but it's it's really changing in many ways the way we understand fashion we can effectively and we will effectively be able to 
move between uh, you know three D worlds, three different you know different worlds, a virtual world, a real world, and you know using and living in in virtual reality and augmented reality. It's but I think it is currently a kind of catch all term that describes everything from yeah luxury labels teaming up with game developers um to to create skins so you know with companies like well like balenciaga and fortnite or ralph lauren and roblox or the cost and, and and minecraft for example or or companies like dressx who you know are really kind of creating uh kind of social media ready photographs um it's also I can see that the metaverse is also covering lots of brand experimentation, like um, like uh, the hybrid collection that uh, Dolce and Gabbana did last year. That's sort of like nine, I think it was nine physical digital um, pieces, a capsule collection, and that made a lot of money. Digital digital designing is um, is earning more now, but it's still not a big earner. So it's still really, really in the early days. So I think what I read somewhere recently was that um, digital fashion, the digital fashion industry could be worth something like uh, 50 billion uh, dollars by 2030. That kind of sounds a lot of money. I mean, I would like 50 billion, thank you very much. but. When you put it into context of the physical fashion industry, and according to, um, I think I read this in Statista, Statista, yeah, um, that will be worth two trillion dollars by 2026. You know, and the fashion, the orthodox fashion industry employs 800 million people across the world, and you know, so it's it's like digital is just still a drop in the ocean and then it's how we can grow it it's still very niche so you can say at the moment that the metaverse is about marketing to direct attention back to physical clothing and this has been driven by gaming an industry which is worth what more than video and music industries combined i mean that's a powerful industry so the fashion has got into bed with gaming. I mean, you know, gaming's a rich man, so why not? So, you know, that's in a way what the metaverse, I see where it is at the moment. But saying all that, I recently bought an Oculus and I am so into this thing. It is amazing. Try to keep it off my head. It really is incredible. So I see huge potential for for VR in this way. Yeah, I think that is, you You brought a lot of interesting perspective into this, into this. And I'm thinking, you know, for me, I always think about the shopping experience itself, like the online shopping experience, how we now see just kind of like the 2D still flat. And um, I saw Balenciaga maybe doing like an in-store where you could walk into the mm. store and, you know, it looked like really nice. And I was like, okay, this is maybe what the metaverse is going to, look like or um different stores and different options that you have in the metaverse and um i'm curious because it's like brands um traditional brands i'm wondering what they're thinking right now you know when they saw all of this happen where they're like okay uh, we are gonna we are gonna do this we're gonna step into the digital and we're gonna build our discord and we're gonna do this or they were like okay this is not for us and this is like not what we stand for because i feel like um, it's also a different kind of branding and skills that you have to pull off with like community building and all these things come into the mix. And I think it's really just for me as a, a watcher of fashion, I just think it's hilarious to watch what what brands are doing right now. And um, you touched a bit on sustainability and fashion. And I'm wondering, um, like you said, the industry, the fashion industry, the physical fashion industry is a big player in the game and I'm wondering how can blockchain technology and how can things like the metaverse digital fashion yeah balance this environmental issues out in the fashion industry yeah <clears throat> that's a very important question and you know I said to you earlier that 
well, our one of our key objectives is to see digital as a, as a pragmatic tool to help sustainability in, in the fashion industry. And our, our vision in the Digital Fashion Group, um, well, as far as the Web3 and Metaverse goes, um, and it's really about that tools can help us be more sustainable. I mean, the fashion industry is hugely wasteful. This huge industry that's worth two trillion by 2026. Uh, somewhere I read somewhere that every second on the planet, somewhere on the planet, every second a truckload of textile waste is landfilled. You know that's incredible, isn't it? And the McKinsey report also they said that if nothing changes in the fashion industry by 2030. The fashion industry will be responsible for, and I'm not quite sure what this means, but it sounds like huge, 2.7 billion metric tonnes of carbon emission a year. And I'm not quite sure how much that is, but, you know, it is a lot. I know that the fashion industry is, you know, one of the biggest polluting industries on the planet. You know, so we've got a long way to go. I've been to many uh, sustainable conferences where they've talked a lot about um, uh, the sustainable the sustainable development goals and setting targets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And fashion are never reaching the targets, but in the Paris Agreement targets for 2030, they're never going to reach them. So we've got a long, long way to go. I think that the whole idea of the Web3 and Metaverse offering people an opportunity to really enjoy virtual versions of garments, so you can buy them. You can wear them. You can have them on the social media. They're not going to. Co- they're not going to create any waste. They're like the waste associated with fast fashion. And when you consider how much waste is created by people just returning garments and just you know not wearing them and just you know having them sent to them, putting them on once and then returning them, and and then most companies then just throw them out because they're you know they've been worn and you know. It's cheaper to do that than to to clean them or whatever. So we we see that this technology can really help all these areas. I'm not really answering your question. I'll get to your I'll get closer to your question in a minute. But moving towards that, we in the digital fashion group, we really see the creative as being centre stage in the data dialogue going forward. Really, kind of close to the consumers, uh, close to the manufacturers in a short supply chain and working with an end-to-end digital suite of kind of open source digital suite where AI is a tool to validate their creativity and embrace the creativity and the product development. So AI doesn't get talked about so much these days because we're all fixated on the metaverse and web3 and stuff but ai is everywhere through the value chain and nobody is educating fashion designers how to use it but it can manage the whole process it is managing the process it can manage the data one of the i have a kind of theory about problems with sustainability one of the problems one of the issues and i can't prove this but you know fashion designers are historically taught to be creative in a little bubble. You just get on, you be creative, you do your thing, and then give your designs to me, and then they go all the way through the value chain, and everybody has their own input into them, and they come out at the end, and the authenticity of the designer is lost. And the designer has no idea what happens in the value chain at all, because they're stuck in this little bubble stuck or choose to be in this little bubble. And what I'm talking about here is is the future creative, and I'm not using the word designer in principle, the future creative needs to be another kind of creative than what we've been educating thus far for an industry that's creating so much waste. You cannot continue to educate people in the same way to create the waste Basically, you need another kind of creative, another kind of creative who sees the value chain, who understands how to use the technology, 
who can pull these things together, who works closely with the manufacturer, understands what their customers really want. So they're not just designing stuff and then having it produced and it being wasted because nobody wants to wear it. And close to the manufacturers in an on-demand structure. So they're selling the garments or they're selling the virtual prototypes before they place the orders. So there's less waste in that way. So all these things are being helped um, by the digitalization of fashion or could be helped better. And I read somewhere recently, and this really pisses me off, <laughs> so it's somewhere recently um, in an article that someone said that all you need to create digital fashion is a computer, uh, the right kind of software like Clo or Marvelous Design, and that's all you need. It's so simple. And I'm presuming the person who wrote this knows nothing about what that's about because it takes a lot of training. It's like a, any other skill. You can't just like learn it overnight. You know, it's you can learn the basics quite quickly, but how to then integrate that into your creative universe takes time like anything else. And that is the one thing that worries me about this whole shift towards digital. People underestimate how much work is actually involved in this. So you have got to invest in learning the skills. There's no point in just reading lots of articles on LinkedIn or looking at Instagram or wearing, or wearing a garment, which on your social media and then you know all about it. You've got to really invest time as a designer, for example, in understanding how to use the software. So my fear is that unless we get over the initial excitement about the possibilities pretty soon, um, we're going to lose the opportunities of actually creating something fantastic with, with the, the possible future that we have. But I've really gone off tack here, haven't I? Because that's not what you're asking me. But I talked about no, sustainability. No, I, think, <laughs> I think that last part was really like great. I think it's we're so early in the process and it's like um, reflecting on all these things that are happening like week from week is really like, and like you said, I like the part that you said about the future creative needs to have more things in mind than just the design process and the bubble that they're in. Mm. Because, um, and it's complicated because looking at supply chain and looking at production and all these things is not easy, but I feel like um, the way you explain it with AI and all these things, it would just make it more transparent and more efficient to track things and to, like you said, on demand production. Um, yeah, I, th I, I think it made a lot of sense. Like you it did. And I think I was, I mean, listening to you feels like I'm, I'm actually listening to a podcast or, you know, watching a, another podcast within a podcast. So that's like pretty cool. Um, and I think maybe I should do podcasts. Do you think I should do so, podcasts? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it, this yeah. was great the way you took your time to explain everything I think this would be really good for the um, you know the I guess um, newer pe peeps who are trying to you know get into the digital space especially the fashion designers this was great like I was like listening to you and enjoying everything you said so you definitely answer the question beyond and I <laughs> I think like something that you said I really stood out for me and I guess Joy also touched on it was like we're like we're like we're we're trying to define this new creative right and to be honest when I was in fashion school I was in one of the best fashion schools in the U.S. and the focus was on the design you know and just get the design and make sure the finishing is amazing and is great and we weren't thinking about the idea of sustainability or how much fabric should go inside or like all the other stuff, right? Or the supply chain and all the the things that is causing those issues, those sustainability, environmental issues, until I would say my last year in college, they had a course about sustainability. And at the time I was like, ah, I don't really believe sustainability is possible in fashion. So I didn't take that course, you know, because my mind was all about making something pretty, you know, until I went, I worked in the fashion industry in New York and I actually saw it with my own eyes because now you are in the industry, you're seeing it, it's really happening. You're not in that bubble. Then I woke up, 
you know, I had that wake up call. So this was really great. I think, um, I don't know if you have any like last few words to share with our community before we let you go. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Well, I, th I do think to reiterate my last point was that it's really exciting and I'm really excited about it. And I love putting on my Oculus and, you know, I love the possibilities of all this. And we need innovators to actually pin these things down and make it really happen. Because at the moment, I feel that we're really going around in a, a very similar circle, lots of chatter. It is about hard work and it is about really knuckling down and really learning the skill of what being, you know, of being digital, thinking digitally, incorporating digital into your creative practice. And that doesn't come overnight. You know, education really matters. So my shout out here would be to all fashion educators that you need to up your game, that you need to really rethink what, how you're approaching fashion. You cannot stick to the old business model. You're really letting your students down if you do that. And register for Digital Fashion Group. <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's all I've got to say. I think we're, everything I will think be solved. That is amazing. So um, let's see, we can find you or we can find Digital Fashion Group. Is it just uh, digitalfashiongroup.com or how is... Yeah, the digitalfashiongroup.com. Um, we have an app. We have, uh, you, can, you can study, you can follow our courses on the app as well, but it's difficult to do with the skills course, but with, the, with Digital Fashion 101, the first course, that's good to do on your app as well. Not many courses have, have are on app, so we're kind of, you know, really ahead of the game in that way. And yeah, you just... Uh, check our website out and um, go in that way. We have a, a new Discord as well, which is, uh, I think, up and launched now. We have um, webinars, free webinars every month with amazing people in the industry. We're just finishing uh, our, well, tomorrow is Friday is our last webinar in the series about sustainability, about digitalization and sustainability. Check us out. We will definitely check you out. Uh, I'm going to be doing that because, yeah, it's always great to have this place that you can go, you can, you know, feel safe and learn. Um, yeah, and also be part of the narrative. Thank you. Thank you so much, Leslie. I mean, this was, I don't even have words. It was fabulous. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm going to so nice. watch this maybe two times or more. <laughs> and, yeah. And thank you, Joy. Thank you all so much for being a part of this forum. And uh, if you'd like to get more involved in our community, uh, do make sure to follow us on our social platforms. We will have all the links in the description. Um, and again, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. And we will see you in the next episode. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.